Welcome back. It's another Ask Five. Today we have Lori Namazi, 21 year expert in California real estate from being a broker. She's involved in a ton of things. We're so excited to talk to her, plus, get her answers to our Ask Five. Yeah, join us today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. You've reached the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 263. You can find all of those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, last couple of weeks, uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago now, I guess it was, we did our you know finish the year strong episode. Great response to that. Good tips and tricks in there. Last week, we talked about making business planning fun, y'all. Taking the stress right, out of business planning. Actually, yeah, exactly, y'all. Um, good, great response to that. We had a lot of hits on YouTube on that video, which was fantastic, and some good response back on that as well. So if you haven't finished your business plan this year, which I'm sure you haven't, and if you think you have, I'm, you're probably lying. So I'm just calling you out right here. Calling you out right here at the beginning of the show. Anyway, go over to that podcast, 262. Take a look at that. Or go over to our website at wbnlpodcast.com and check out our free business course, our business planning course, uh, right in our freebies page on the site where you can learn to do the daily. Right, Jana That's right. Okay. And we have this fun swag on our website. Yes, Jana's got us motivated again to do swag. So there's, there's the daily sticker. Jan doesn't know it yet. She hasn't seen it yet, but we have the actual do the daily uh, iconography um, sticker as well. So, I already ordered those. Thank you very much. Oh, They're oh, on their way. Never mind. I guess Jan does know that. But anyway, <laughs> go over there and check that out. It's a great reminder. You know, if you have things in front yes. of your face, we always talk about that with business planning. Put it in front of your face. Put your goals in front of your face. Uh, it you works. Be, I got it all over the place. It's making yeah. me stay on track. Jan gave me a little tour of her abode yesterday via FaceTime. And yes, yeah, she does it everywhere you look in that room. She's sitting in right there. It says do the daily. So anyway, enough of all that. On to the Ask Five. We're back again. We haven't had an Ask Five in a while. We are back with the perfect guest to, perfect. to jump back into the, the series. Lori Namazi, friend of the show and a very good friend of mine for many, 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 many years now. And uh, we are excited to have her back. So let's bring her on in. Welcome back, Lori. Hello. Hello Lori. Hi there. It's great to see you guys again. Good to see you. So just, you know, for people that might not have seen some of the earlier episodes, I think you were last with us at our 200th episode. We were celebrating our 200th, uh, 200th wow. episode. It was great to have you. And that's been 63 episodes ago. So a, a lot of water under the bridge since then. So why don't you give us a little idea of, you know, what's been going on with you uh, lately and, you know, just a little bit of your background for people that haven't uh, met you before. Well, sure. So um, Matt and I worked together many years ago. I've been in the business 21 years and had the privilege of working with Matt for, gosh, I don't know, about 10 of those years. A long time. So that was wonderful. Um, great experience working together. And uh, I was at a large brokerage for a total of 15 years. So 10 of those with Matt, five after he left. And then I decided, you know what, um, after starting as an agent and moving into the management and leadership and administrative side, uh, worked my way up to many, many different roles and ultimately became the broker, uh, the broker of record in California for about 1900 agents. And that was a, an amazing experience, um, crazy but amazing. And uh, then I decided it was just time to spread my own wings and start my own company. So started my own brokerage, started a brokerage consulting business. Uh, what I had learned over those 15 years and especially the years where I was the broker, um, a lot of independent brokers just had no one to go to for advice. So they would call me. And so I said, well, clearly there's a need. So I will start a business and, and help them. And, and it truly is a joy to do that. So I've got an amazing clientele of, of brokers who I've either helped them start their brokerage or I've looked at their brokerage and helped them refine it, set the foundation um, and serve as an ongoing advisor to them. So that's, that's it's great. really a lot of fun. Um, took a little detour and uh, joined a large uh, franchise for about a year as their compliance, um, one of their compliance officers, and then uh, decided that just wasn't a good fit anymore and uh, relaunched the brokerage with my business partner, Lisa. And so we've been rocking and rolling with the brokerage and the consulting business and all our volunteerism and just a lot going on. Yeah, you are, you are busy. It's what you, you are uh, on social media, uh, 
all. Well, actually, Lisa is on social media. I think. <laughs> right, I, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> Lisa is always with Lori Namazi, but no, you're always you're always uh, doing something. I think the best way to describe where you're uh, where you are right now in real estate is that you know you you are all of all of the things you mentioned but you really are the perfect representative for the agent um you know in in the industry today because you have that knowledge and you have that passion to make things better right isn't that really the end goal yeah yeah absolutely so thank you for and that. Are, you, are you having fun still the consulting part with the brokerages is awesome but it, but do you find that it's great to to help help the the newer you know the agents maybe you're bringing in seasoned in, as well as newer agents and help them navigate you know there's always something different happening in our in our industry and that's kind of where we wanted to start today was what do you think are the biggest issues that are facing your agents or any agents across the country right now and how they're dealing with you know, markets always change. That's obviously one of them. But can you just speak to some of those things that you're seeing with your challenges or p how people maybe are overcoming some of those challenges right now in your market? Absolutely. So so I'm a director for CAR, the California Association of Realtors. And then I am also very active at the national level. And next year I'll be a director. I was a director before, not this year. Awesome. I'll be a director next year. Um, so I do have the opportunity to hear brokers and agents from across the country and we're all we're all experiencing the same thing you know lack of inventory high interest rates so the market is tough and i've been in the business 21 years so now i've gone through you know i always hear people say you know well, i've gone through x number of cycles of this and i thought well i haven't yet well now i have um, <laughs> yeah yeah we're in the second downturn of my career now. And, um, you know, with that, a lot of people are just, they're struggling. They're financially struggling. They're mentally struggling. So it's really hard to stay in the game. And, you know, you guys talked about business planning and for sure, you know, I'm doing that with my agents right now. And, you know, one of the slides that I, I put up there to be a little funny. It didn't really land well, but <laughs> <laughs> they came back after lunch break and said, okay, we get it now. And, and it was a, a photo of, of the ocean and it said being successful is, or treading water is the new success yeah. right now. I mean, That's just nice. to tread water means you're successful. So with all of the things going on in the industry, you know, what's affecting our industry, the things I just mentioned, but then also, you know, we've got the major commission lawsuit happening right now. They're right. in the trial right now. Um, we've got the Department of Justice still looking at us. Um, we've got a lot of um, upheaval at NAR with, some, with you know, some heavy sexual harassment allegations. Yes. And all of all of the stuff that's been coming out of that. Um, so there's a lot, a lot. Yeah. To do. And so, you know, the strong will survive. Um, I'm kind of expecting, anticipating that we'll see a, a huge decline in, in membership come January um, because people didn't make money this year. So if they didn't make money, do they want to spend the dues that, you know, the bills come out in December and January and, and it's hard. So I think people need to really, um, get get back to the basics. Do the daily. Um, you know they have to have their they have to have their plan. And and I took the approach with my agents not to do an annual plan. I mean we did the annual plan, but I took a different approach when when I did the the meeting with them. Instead of hey it's the new year and let's you know let's start fresh. We all love that fresh start. So I'm not I'm not saying don't do that, but I said, we need to really look at this more from a strategic planning point of view mm -hmm. and build our business and do something that is sustainable. Cause we've all, I mean, for how many years have, have we heard agents sat, sit down, do their business plan, it sits on the shelf. Yep. Maybe you're lucky exactly. it's a white paper and it's taped to the wall or taped to the, to the desk, but most of the time it's not. So I'm really focusing on having them build their business as a business and really look at it, you know, not just the daily habits. Um, a lot of people say, well, you know, you got to do prospecting. It's like brushing your teeth. You brush your teeth every day. So prospect every day. They're not doing it. No, They're yeah. not doing it. So I had to take a different approach. And, and uh, one of the ask five questions I'll give you, uh, one of the tips, one of the main tips I gave them, but you know, there's, there's a lot facing us in this industry. And yet, I also teach for two community colleges. I teach pre-licensing classes. Enrollments are not down yet. Yeah, interesting. So 
you know, it, those are still steady, still with the wait lists. And so that will eventually catch up where they will, um, we'll see those drop in enrollments. But for right now, it's still an industry people want, want to be in. What are yeah, the reasons really why, when you talk to the, the new people coming in, why are they getting into the business, Lori? Especially, yeah, with, exactly. you know, you know, you know, you hear what's going on. They know the interest rates are getting higher. They know it's tougher. So why are people getting into it? Well, I hate to say it, but it's all the TV shows. Uh, oh, yeah. It glamorizes our industry, even with the drama. And, and I've, mm. I've literally watched one episode of one of those shows, and I'm like, how am I even watching this? How I know, I can't do it either. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's horrible. So, you know, what they're seeing is, hey, you can make a lot of money, and it's fun. And, and they don't have to do much because you're right. On the TV show, it's like, let me show you a couple houses, and right. then we end the show, and then, you know. You don't see all that behind the scenes work that you have to, you know, the hours of work that goes into it. I would say the number two reason though, which is, which I find interesting is um, they will share their personal experience, either of their own home or home ownership, uh -huh. um, you know, uh, plans uh, and their experiences mm -hmm. or something from their parents. Cause these, this is a junior, two junior colleges that I teach for. So they're typically younger people and you, you can tell what they're writing and they'll talk about, how their families went through some not so great experiences. And so they want to do better. So, you know, that is a, a noble reason to get into the business. And I've really infused uh, fair housing into the classes. Um, now it's legally required for, for California um, as of January 1st, 2024. Yeah. Our practice class has to have an element of implicit and explicit bias and have an interactive component, which I was already doing, so I didn't have to modify it too <laughs> much, but um, it's, it's helpful to show them what is going on, what can go wrong, even with good intentions. Right. We all can make a mistake. And, and honestly, reflecting back on the beginning of my career, I distinctly remember a couple of conversations where I was like, ooh, I wasn't supposed to say that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, th this thing, can we circle back to the commission lawsuits? A couple of the big companies have settled, and I know there's the one that's happening right now. But wh what is, from your perspective, I love that you've got all this insight because California Association of Realtors is, you know, th isn't it the largest association? And I think maybe Texas is after you, maybe, or. Um, I think like we're second that. or third in the name. Second, I think second in the nation. Florida is actually the largest. Florida. Oh, that's that's right. Exactly. And I, I'm I'm a member of that Florida. Florida's good Florida. too about keeping people informed. Then I think you know right there. But anyway, what do you what do you feel that do we need to to, to share with our audience? Because there's a lot of people who are not staying up to speed with what's going on, and every area has different things that they do. For example, in our area in Vegas people don't use the buyer brokerage agreement, you know, but there are states I've talked to people who are like, yeah, we just always use a buyer brokerage agreement. But I think it's mainly a little, you know, I think, I think we'll get through this. Okay. Cause it's about retraining our agents, the season ones on what to say and not to say, you know, like for example, I just saw somebody on a, on a, on a video the other day, who's been in business a long while, the video might be old, but it said, Hey buyers, you know, my services are free, which is one of the key things that's in this lawsuit. Right. Can you address what you're doing or what from NAR? Uh, I've seen the points, the 179 things we do as a listing agent, which we really need for the buyer side, in my opinion. I'm not sure why NAR didn't put that out first, um, yeah. because I think that's what's lacking across the country. But can you speak a little bit to what what if somebody's listening and saying, well, what do I need to do to get ready in case everything shifts in the way the commissions are paid? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, I, I think the main thing is we absolutely need to demonstrate our value. You know, having a list to show here are all the things I do, because the reality is and those reality shows highlight it very well. They think we just show a house and and heaven forbid, if you're on the listing side and you didn't need to put the house in the MLS, all of a sudden your value has gone way down. Yeah. Clients think your value as a listing agent is putting the property in the MLS. Well, guess what? I already found my own buyer. So therefore you're not worth it. And they don't know all of the details, all of the tasks that we do behind the scenes. But more importantly, they're not understanding the level of negotiation that we're going through, the level of compliance, the way that we're keeping them safe, we're protecting them from hopefully a lawsuit. Um, you know, we can't prevent them, but we add this layer of protection that they, they honestly have, have no idea. So we have to be able to demonstrate our value. And in California, 
um, our state association is is really very incredible. We have some top notch people in the industry, and they are they are on top of everything. Um, they have been working very closely with NAR for a couple of years now. So California was very ahead of this. They actually put six new forms together last December, and and I'll be honest, I did not learn the forms because we didn't need to use them yet because yeah. MLS works, you know, we don't have this problem yet. So they were so far ahead of the problem that they were creating forms for us that we weren't ready for. And so wow. it was kind of weird. I wish they would have just held off maybe yeah. them in June because then there's a ton of training and that caused a lot of confusion. So that was one thing that I was, I was discouraged about is in, in their effort to be proactive there was a lot more confusion mm -hmm. as people were saying, oh, okay, so now on the new contract, we have to check this box. Well, no, you don't check this box unless, you know, these other three things have happened and that's not happening in our market. So it was a I little see. bit confusing, um, but now, you know, even I've, I've had a, a change of heart. Oh shoot, I better learn these forms now because they're probably going to be needed. So it really truly is, Jan, to your point about education, it really is about education because if you look back, you know, you all have been in the industry as long as I have longer mm -hmm. and we, we make changes that we think are going to, you know, be detrimental to the business and there's no way anyone's going to ever learn this. And six months later, you totally forgot about it. Like, I totally agree with that statement. Exactly. Right? Um, can I just ask you a question? Because this is where, uh, this is the curve we're going to have to go through. So like when you're talking about forms, I love that California is ahead, but uh, always ahead of it. Because a lot of times we we end up doing exactly what California does in Nevada. Okay. But sometimes it takes two years for us to catch up. Um, but one of the things that I saw, uh, I had a trainer for, that teaches uh, ABR, you know, a faculty training session, uh, you know, instructor training, and she's was really interesting. I think she actually is the author for NAR, I can't think of her name right now, um, for the uh, ABR course. But she was talking about in Illinois, where she, she, one of her associations, about how they were changing the listing form or about to do that to say, to get put it on the seller to say, do you want to offer? The difference is just us saying, hey, we're going to negotiate a commission with you as a listing agent, then we're going to co-op. Just changing the language around a little bit where it's like, do you want to, she, she basically went through, they were ahead of it and said, we went for a minute with zero co-op in the MLS. And then very quickly, all of a sudden you started to see, you know, an offer of compensation for the buyer's agent, but it all went back to informing the, the list, the seller and letting the seller make an informed decision on what they want to do. And they work through that and they're a little ahead of it and we're not doing anything like that. But I'm just wondering when you talk about the forms, which, how is California taking that lead with, you know, you go out to take a listing and what are we going to do if and when all this gets 100? You know, we already know we're going to have to disclose things differently. You know, we're going to have to come out and say it's not required or however that language is that's coming down already from some of those settlements. It's a really good point you bring up because in California, the focus has only been on the buyers on the buyer contract and not on the listing contract. So we have our new forms coming out in December and hopefully that's one of them, you know, change to the listing contract because it is laid out right now where it is, it is separated. So I guess in reality, it, it technically is an offer, but it doesn't really ask the question. So a, a year and a half, two years ago, when they did revise the listing agreement, there they changed, they included do you want to receive buyer love letters or not? And oh, it really was more of a question. It was check this box if you do and wow. check this other box if you don't. That's so cool. maybe, yeah, so maybe they'll they'll lay it out like that. Okay. I mean, technically it's it's separated now, but we don't we do need to change how we explain it, which yeah. is do you want to offer it? And then of course the training that we need to be focusing more on in a lot of states is helping us and how to use a buyer brokerage agreement, show their value. And, you know, this is my, I just wonder if you agree with this. This is my whole argument on this, or my whole philosophy is that it's the fact that the buyer, in my opinion, has always been paying the commission. It's in the offer. So if I come in and your house is listed for a million dollars and I offer you a million, my buyer offers you a million dollars, part of that offering is your closing cost, what you, your, encumbrances on it, your loans and the commission that you've agreed to pay. 
So if all of a sudden we're going to change the language around that, then my thought's going to be, if if I have to come in here, there's a lot of things that people are talking about. If I'm the buyer's agent and I have to come in and my guy's going to pay me a percentage, then we're not offering you the same amount that we would have if you were offering it. Six one, half dozen the other. And then I think that there's so much going on here where are we going to have change the language in our in our ethics and, and NAR is involved in this to say, can we put commission in the contract, right? See, these are all the things. And then talking about lenders. So there's so much that's on, I mean, it's just been going on for a while and it's unsettling to me that we don't have the answers. So right. we're going to be at this place and we're all going to, to your point, go through. Uh, it reminds me of when the Dodd-Frank stuff came out and the disclosures. Remember all that? The CD mm-hmm. and the low, you know, yeah. loan estimate. Everybody had to get used to the HUD, the escrow companies. Nobody was ready for it. And then now we look at it and like, okay, that's not a big deal. Part I mean, of the game. But it only took like six months or so and everybody got it. But are you with me on that? I'm like, there's a lot yeah. of stuff to deal with. We'll get through it. But it's like, how come no one's really on this enough is, is my frustration. Or at least that's what I feel like it's happening. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of conversation about how will we move forward. And mm-hmm. there's certainly been conversation about, you know, well, we need to change how we speak to the buyers and we need to figure out how the lenders are going to work it out. And what about FHA and VA where those buyers can't pay the closing costs? You know, so there's, there's so many different factors to it. And so I think that, we well, unfortunately when when mandates come down it's always we're going to do this and then there's no there's no path there's no formula of how it's going to work you know anytime there's a new law and we've we've been having an ongoing struggle in california about our fire hardening and defensible space laws that keep you know just being implemented and then you know all these fire agencies have no idea what it is and how to work with it and what's supposed to okay. happen so we don't know either, and our forms are <laughs> to just sort of. You know, so get yourself it. ready. But it's when right. it when it happens, we're all going to have to figure it out together. And you know, you know, this is the way we do things. Yeah, I think we'll we'll figure it out. It, it won't yeah. be easy. It'll be really bumpy for a while. And That'd and like okay. you said, you know, what's that going to do to pricing? Because we all know what you know. We think when a for sale by owner has a property and they're not offering commission, what happens? A buyer's agent will show up and say, well, we're offering you less because you're not paying commission. Exactly. You know? So I don't know if they're doing a math lesson in this trial. I kind of hope they are. Well, Let's show you how this math pencils out when you've got commission as part of it and when you don't. Because, you know, it's going to change the market values for sure. In my opinion, it's going to change it for sure. I agree with you. And then we get through that and then everybody realizes, wow, the buyer was always paying the commission anyway. <laughs> right. Um, so we'll get right back to the way you disclose it, the way we put it on forms, and then you'll see offers of compensation, I think, but we'll see. Um, because, you know, it's just interesting how it's all working out. All right, good. Thank you so much for your insight on that. And it's a conversation I think we have to keep having, Matt, as we talk to different people, because we need to be prepared for it. You know, I've been through so many of these ups and downs. Like I remember when I was a broker, when we had that first, you know, foreclosure crisis here in Nevada was so hard hit. We didn't, we never had to deal with as many offers. And that's when we came up with the multiple counter offer, a better version of it that we use today, but we were writing things as we were dealing with it. Yeah. And I, and my hope is that this has been going on for a couple of years now. And, you, I, and I, I know there's a lot of great minds out there, but it's just not trickling down, you know, all the way to the agent on the street who's like, what lawsuit? Okay. I heard there was a lawsuit, you know, I don't really know. Cause I don't really get into all that. You know, my broker's going to tell me when I need to, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there exactly. are those, right. All right, Matt, you want to jump in? We're, we're carrying on a great conversation. Yeah, but no, I, I mean, hey, before we jump, but, no, really seriously, before we jump into the, the, um, I'm telling you, Lori, Jan's been looking forward to this conversation for a long time. Aww. She's been talking, she been, like daily she's like we should ask her this um before we jump into the ask, the ask five though is there anything else that you wanted to touch on that you that you know that's a hot topic right now either here in california or across the nation that you can think of other than fire hardening holy mackerel right. i don't even know what that is oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can guess. fire hardening in the last in last year because the, the, the name sounds nothing like what you think it's preparing your home for a fire right. um you know yeah. fire insurance is a major issue in yeah. california oh like, wow that's one of our biggest issues right now. So well, it's like hurricane. It's like hurricane like insurance, insurance in Florida. In Florida. My cousin, my cousin has had her, her her house on the sale since May. No offers. Oh man. 
Not one offer. I mean, you know, there's issues with the, not issues with the house, but it's a, it's a unique home. But one of the big issues is it's right on the water and insurance is impossible or way out of control to get. Well, it's so. in Fort Myers where, which was yeah. really coming a hurry, the last yeah. hurricane, right? Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. I interrupted. Back to you. No, no, I think, I think we've covered a lot. Okay. okay. All right. Well, let's, let's jump into the ask. Right. Whoops. Not what holds you back. That's not the right thing. Uh, let's jump into the S5 right now. First question, Lori, is what's the best idea um, for agents uh, that you have for agents to deal with their SOI, to build their SOI and, and you know, keep connected to their uh, past clients? Uh, so as I mentioned with the business planning, what I'm doing for my agents, I, I challenge them to something really small because they're not doing it right now. So I said, look, if you can make five connections a week, five a week for four weeks, one month, you'll have talked to 20 people. And then the next month, up, up your game to six. And then the next month, seven. So at the end of 12 months, you're only connecting with, only connecting with 17 people a week, but that's 572 people a year. And that's 572 people more than you're connecting yeah. with right now. Yeah. So, you know, so I was trying to get them to do something that was doable not i mean i talked to a broker friend of mine the following day and he's like so you know you could really make 300 phone calls a day and if you just do 50 and i'm like yeah my agents are not doing yeah 50, 50 make calls. one <laughs> right yeah. so so challenging them to to make those contacts with their sphere and their past clients and just have a conversation about you know first of all do the catch up if you haven't talked to them in a while and hey there's a lot going on in the industry do you have any questions is there anything that I can just help you understand about the interest rates and capital gains and anything and, and having those conversations. And so I think that's a way we reconnect with the, with, with that group of people that we've already done business with or, or they're part of our lives. That's good. That is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. We, we actually have been focusing on our business planning. Well, we always have, but really putting the focus on this year and your, really getting clarity on your business and narrowing your focus down and something that you enjoy doing. Cause if you enjoy doing it, you well, might it's simplifying. It. That's what you yeah. just did. There is simplifying. It doesn't seem overwhelming. And, right. and I love that approach because, and I've something I have talked about before too. And it's like, you don't just get up every, as part of our do the daily, get up and do something today. That's at least going to get you in front of somebody, even if it's just making a call to your sphere of influence or a past client or something. Right. Uh, but, because you're I, taking activity, you're making your you got a focus, you've got an intent, a focus intention. Right. And I told them too with that, I said, you know, I don't care if you work 12 hours a day, six hours a day, one hour a day. Make that time yes. impossible. That's if you're right. you are just gonna work one hour a day, that's fine. But make some phone calls or, or go talk to people. And yeah. and like you said, Matt, don't do the things you hate. If you hate door knocking, don't door knock. Yeah. No <laughs> sense. Amen. <laughs> Right. All right. Our second question is a little bit of because what is talking about ways other than people that you know. Do you have an idea to generate business so that you can add people to your sphere of influence for follow up? What What are things that you tell people to do? Or, you know, that are uh, you know the first one everyone always tells us. Well, my business seasoned agents will always say eighty percent of my business comes from Good people world. I already know. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So what about the person who? needs to add everybody needs to add more what's the best idea for generating new business with people that you don't haven't met yet yeah so i think you have to create new circles so pick up a new hobby join a new club make some friends go make some friends and i haven't i have a newer agent who has only been in california for the last three years and when she came here she got in the business so she doesn't have a sphere of influence in California. All her families and friends is in another state. Mm -hmm. And so she's constantly joining clubs. And, and she asked me yesterday, how many, how many clubs should I belong to? And I said, there's no magic number. I said, you have a unique situation in that you need to build that sphere here in California. And, and she's done just a little bit of business. So she doesn't have a large, you know, past client um, list, but creates a new circle. So, you know, I'm trying to do that myself. Most of my friends are in the business. So if I want to grow my business, now if I want to grow my brokerage consulting business, I have the perfect audience. Exactly. But if I yeah. want to grow my buyer and seller business, I need to go make some new friends because all my friends are in the business. So creating some new circles expands your sphere, um, gives you the ability to meet more people who then know other people. 
perfect. That's what I, offer. I love that. I like That's great advice. Thing. It's not hard. Just go do it. My marketing mind is coming up all sorts of ideas with circles now. There you are. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> <Welcome>. <laughs> Something else to create. Hmm. There'll be a sticker about that pretty soon. So there you go. I'll, I'll send one to you. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> uh, question number three. Uh, Lori Namazi, what holds you back? So I have a um, fortune from Chinese food taped to my monitor. And it says, you can't be committed to your dream and your comfort zone. Yeah. So what holds me back is my comfort zone. You know, I could say what everyone else says, you know, get out of your own way, it's the fear. But all that really is is the comfort zone. And so in order for me to move beyond, you know, my level of success now, I have to get out of my comfort zone. And when I look back on my career, the biggest leaps I made were the scariest leaps that I made. Yeah. Yep. I got out yeah. of my comfort zone. I love that. Brilliant. Get out, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's it. Got to get out of the comfort zone. All You're right. awesome, Lauren DeMossi. <laughs> <laughs> Inspiration. Can you share with our audience anything recent or old school or anything? It can be whatever. It can be people, just anything that might be inspirational that is a, a, good, a good reference. Well, I try to find inspiration in, in nearly everything. I think that you, you you get a little nugget of something in everything you do, every conversation, everything you read or listen to. But honestly, the biggest thing right now is my grandson. He's yeah. my grandson, Jameson. He's 18 months old and the kid is fearless. And he has this determination and this focus that is incredible to watch. And he's just like every other toddler, okay? He's, he's, he's special to me, but he's not any, you know, we're all human. And so there's this book I read called The Mountain. The Mountain is You. And when you think about it, it's very symbolic. You know, oh, you made a mountain out of mo a molehill. You made something bigger. Or, oh, how am I ever going to climb that mountain? I'm looking at, you know, I'm at the base of it. And I know, Matt, you like to climb. So yep. you're at the base of it and you're looking up at the mountain. You're like, I can never do that. Well, the mountain is you. And in that book, I, I forget the author, but in the book, she talks about the brain, the chemistry of the brain and how infants and toddlers are not conditioned to give up. Yeah. They are conditioned to keep mm. going mm. when they learn how to roll over, when they learn how to crawl, when they learn how to walk. They don't try it once and say, well, that didn't work. So I'm giving up. And yet we become conditioned over time. To have that and so you know i think back when i was when i was a kid and i was in girl scouts i was fearless going out selling those girl scout cookies because i wanted all the prizes wow well, the, biggest, the biggest prize today if i go out door knocking is a listing and mm. the commission that comes from that yet i am terrified of door knocking i hate it so i don't do it so i think looking at at the fact that we can't we can't um I don't want to to tell my grandson don't do something because I don't want to break that fearlessness and that determination and that focus. But yet over time, he's going to learn that hopefully not from me. His parents are amazing. They're out there. Go play in the backyard. I told his dad it's time to build the um, American Ninja Warrior obstacle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because that kid is going to be that kid. So um, I, I think that just finding that inspiration from watching how how little kids are is wow. really kind of the coolest thing I've been experiencing lately. That's awesome. No, no answer. That's about that. Add to that before I go to the next question. I have a, a really good friend who, um, in the last couple of years, just keeps telling me this word every now and then randomly, and that word is perspective. And so when I start feeling down or frustrated, I think of perspective and how can I how can I change my perspective on this situation. This mm -hmm. obstacle is not a mountain forever. It's a, maybe a mountain today, but it's not a mountain forever. So changing your perspective too, I think yeah. is important. Good. That's wise and very true. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you, Jana Bryan. Um, all right, right Troy, give, give us your best advice for agents to thrive now and into the future. So like I mentioned with the business planning, you know, don't just plan for a year. Plan for the next three to five years. Really look at 
what you want to accomplish over the next few years, because now you have something to work for. You know, you know, I, I live in Southern California and I, I tell my agents, if I want to go to the beach, I need to get on the five freeway South. Okay. I don't need to get on the 91 East to go to the desert. So I need to know where I'm going and I need to have that roadmap to get there. Well, the GPS. So uh, the GPS needs to know where to take me. And if I want to really be successful in my business, I need to know where I'm going and I need to have those stretch goals year over year so I can show that my business is growing. Otherwise it might just feel like a hobby. So that's the advice I've been giving my agents and, and my broker clients and, and others that I know is really create more of a strategic plan of this is how I'm going to operate my business because most of us, I believe can be really good employees. I know I am an amazing employee. I'm not as great as an entrepreneur. It's hard, <laughs> you know? So I have to really have it all mapped out in order for me to, to really accomplish what I want to accomplish. That's really good. Yeah, we, we, we always uh, use the phrase, begin with the end in mind, right? Absolutely. It's the same kind of concept. Totally Absolutely. Good. And I'll give you one, one that's fun. Um, every year, my sister and I do this little project. It's, it's just written out on a paper. And so for 2024, it's 24 things to do in 2024. And every year, next year, the following year, we Ooh, I love this. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And we look at it as... You know, do we have any personal goals we want to accomplish? No, is it? I mean, the year I really killed it was the year I, I did that. I started that and I got my master's degree that year and I got my broker's license that year because I really mapped it out. But it's not all business. You know, it's spend more time with a specific person. You know, go try a new restaurant every single month. And so I've been doing a lot more um, fun things because it's on my list and I want to mark it off. So. <laughs> I love that idea. Yeah, I'm really going idea. to so share that idea. Yeah, put everybody. it in your archives. I'm, I'm just thinking about doing the same thing when you said your sister. You just got me inspired about, because we're scattered around, coming together and having something like that to focus on. You know, uh, That's a cool idea. Maybe I get it's them to fun. do that with me. It, it, it motivates each other. And uh, you know, it can be stuff around the house, too. Projects that you've been putting off. Yep. And say, okay, next year I'm going to get that done. So it's a lot of fun. Cool. Well, Lori and Amasa, you are always an inspiration when you come on this show. Oh, I always really yeah. appreciate it. Always, you know, I've said this, I say this every time you come on, but mm -hmm. I swear it is so impressive to, to listen to you and just to see your growth over the decades that we have known each other is absolutely fascinating. And I think that, or not just not fascinating, it's not like it's a surprise, but it's a, no, it's just fantastic to see that. And it's a lot of what you're talking about. It's mindset, right? And it's setting those goals and setting that stretch goals and making and getting out of your comfort zone. I've seen you go through all of those processes over the last decades. And it's just so awesome. You bring such great info, right? You, you are, you're energetic in a way that is a little bit contagious, which is an awesome. Thing. And that's why you, and that's why you can be the representative of the uh, the real estate agents to the industry and vice versa. So my calm, my calm energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. thank you for that. And you know, you know, you you were a big part of that. You know, being being able to work with someone who said, "Believe in yourself. Stop second guessing yourself. Stop asking permission." Um, really yeah, made yes. an impact in my career all those years ago. So that's I thank awesome. you for that. You you can take some of the credit. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, that's not where I was going, but okay. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Uh, I'm sure because Lori Namazi is friend of the show, she will be back sometime in the future. If there, yeah, actually, as things progress with what's going on with the, you know, the rules and regulations, and yeah, uh, we'll have you back. Exactly, uh, because Jan will be asking for you to come back. I will. I'll be like, what's California doing and NAR doing, and have we taken it from where we are at episode two sixty three? It's gonna be interesting to see where we are in a maybe within six months. That's yeah, right. absolutely. I'd be happy to. All right. A couple of housekeeping things here at the end. As I mentioned at the, the front of the show, if you are looking to build that business plan, uh, you know, that actually, you know, we have the forms and all of the, the stuff to help you do that. If you want to do that, go over to our website and uh, take a deeper dive into that whole information over at our Fundamentals for Real Estate Agents and Business Planning course. It's over in our freebie section. Check that out over at WBNLpodcast.com. And then we have just recently launched our Real Estate Sales Builder Certification Program. 
Uh, this is really designed for small brokers, team leaders, and um, you know, just anyone that has agents that they want to train up but don't have the time, the, uh, the maybe the knowledge or the cash, maybe that's part of it too, to build or create their own training program. We have a training program that is actually turnkey. We, will, uh, we have a whole guide. Uh, and a series of uh, videos that walk your uh, mentor and your trainer in how to actually train our course. Great information. We have a, several uh, clients that are using it to right now uh, to great success, actually. So um, yeah, go check that out. It is called, let me find my little clicker here, Real Estate Sales Builder Certification. Um, and you can actually, to get more information on that, a lot of it's on the website already, but you, there's a form on there that you can fill out and we will contact you personally and uh, walk you through that process. Anything else, Jan O'Brien, as we close out today? Nope, just inspired to get up and get out there and find a way to get business because there's yeah, always people buying and selling homes. You just gotta yeah. find them. Lori, any, any last words from you? No, just thank you guys for what you do. Your, your website is great. I, I refer to it often as, as a member. I go in and look at your stuff. So absolutely, you guys are doing some great work and I appreciate being part of your world. No, you are a part of it. We appreciate you. All right, everyone. This was episode 263. You can find all of those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. And as we say every week, get up, get out, live the life you've dreamed and be forever wandering, but not lost. I'll that try not funny. to sniff too much. That's all right. So it's annoying. all funny. It's annoying. <laughs> There's a little coughing going on in the episode. <gasps> <laughs> he is, uh, actually, let's start over again. Um, okay. I, I, we're going to do that rest of the part. I, did, I, I was starting to start talk about it. You were jumping in. Moving on to it, huh? You were getting excited. You were jumping I in. I know, I know. I'm, I'm like, let's go. Let's, let's, let's find out what's going on in the world. All right, here we go. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> I know you're ready. I know Lori's ready. All right. Welcome back. It's another Ask Five 